Hi Travelers, Tara here, Hidden Lotus Tarot. Today is October 7th, the last day of the Mercury Direct Shadow Phase. And I don't know about you, but I cannot wait until tomorrow, October the 8th. Because Mercury has still been playing tricks on me with my electronics and my vehicle and whatnot. So anyway, um, I also feel that um, maybe some of you have been feeling um, kind of like this urge to move or that things are starting to pick up pace in certain areas of your life. Um, I think that could also be attributed to the uh, direct shadow phase of Mercury. Mercury's been, it fell through these eclipses, so I think it was an extremely powerful uh, retrograde this time. We got another one coming up in December, people, right around Christmas. So just be prepared for your shopping. If you're doing it on any on shopping online, okay, um, be careful about buying electronics and stuff like that because sometimes this stuff won't work. Uh, or you might get buyer's remorse and then you find out that you only had, you know, 24 hours to ask for a refund back or something like that. So read the fine print. Um, Try to use as many shipping uh, services as you possibly can. Um, Mercury also sometimes can interfere with travel. So as you've seen, we have the bad weather. Sometimes it can bring bad weather. So we know that we have the hurricane uh, down in Florida. And for those of you who have relatives and friends there, uh, please know that they are in my prayers uh, that um, things are not as bad as they have been predicted to be. We hope not. So um, those of you who have had to flee, if you're watching this, you know, I'm glad you made it to safety. Um, so I'm going to come to you. I promised you that I'd be coming to you today with a hidden lotus spread. I haven't done one of those in a long time. Uh, this is going to be a general reading, so it will be for no specific sign um, and no specific time frame. If we wanted to, we could say within the next couple of weeks, and that'll put us right around the time of the full moon coming up for October. Um, I can't believe it's October already. It's ridiculous. So what I'm going to do today that's a little bit different is I'm going to do the Hidden Lotus spread, but any cards that kind of stick out like sore thumbs, I'm actually going to clarify those with the Marseille Tarot and then further clarify it with the Sabila cards. So uh, just a new approach, something different. Um, so I'm pre-shuffling the cards. I did a bit of pre-shuffling earlier. And what I want or what I would like is for the cards to tell a story and hopefully provide a message to someone out there that needs it. So um, because this is general, it will not speak to everyone. So try to take what you can uh, from it and disregard what you cannot. Okay, give me just a few more seconds. Okay, I'm going to put one more good shuffle and one last rifle, and then I'm going to lay the cards. I hope that they will speak clearly and truly. All right, here we go. Okay, two of wands in the center. So I've got two aces. Well, what do you know? All right, let me take a look at this. What I'm looking at in the center, and that's our focus card, is the Two of Wands. And, um, you know, what I'm kind of getting is this might be a situation that goes back 
to uh, the eclipse of March 2016 because this card represents March uh, 21st through the 30th. So either way, we're still dealing with eclipse energies. We're coming off of the eclipse energies. So the two of wands is about a choice. Um, it is about choosing one path over the other, uh, one direction over the other, perhaps one relationship over the other. Um, it is about contemplation. It is about duality. Um, because it's, <clears throat> excuse me, a wand, I would think that it's a choice in terms of your desires and or ambitions. Okay. Um, the cards are two of wands, eight of wands, the lovers, the hanged man, the queen of pentacles, the six of pentacles, the seven of cups, the ten of swords, the ace of wands. So it's kind of all over the place. Now, I have two major arcana cards, uh, the lovers and the hanged man. Um, and the major arcanas take more weight over the pip cards here. Um, I have this queen of pentacles. So more than likely, this is referring to uh, an earth sign individual. I'm not going to necessarily say that it is a female. We can infer that because it is the queen. But as we know, like the lovers, we can all embody the energies of both male and female. So whether this is heterosexual or uh, same-sex couple, whomever is going to take the female in the role. Um, but also, if you are not, don't have an earth, sun, uh, moon, or rising sign, then this is someone who's going to work in the capacity of like a bookkeeper, a librarian, an accountant, uh, maybe a teacher, uh, someone who handles lots of money, maybe merchandising, um, sales, um, also someone who uh, does, you know, has a, a deep care for nature and ecology, um, someone who is very practical, uh, very down to earth, not a very fl uh, flashy individual, um, and someone who's extremely dedicated and hardworking. Okay, those are the characteristics of the Queen of Pentacles. Um, and what I'm, I'm looking at is that for this particular individual, there are some choices. Now, if this hasn't occurred for you, this is upcoming energies that you may be dealing with all the way through October. Um, but there has been a choice that has had to come about. And I have the lovers here. Now, I'm not exactly sure if this is three people in a situation or if it is simply someone who's trying to rectify the two sides of themselves. Um, I say it could be two people in a situation because I have three people here in this card, the six of coins, with this ten of wands. Um, but the lover's card is about a choice between head and heart. OK, um, it is the temptation. It represents cooperation. It does represent love. It represents union. OK, but sometimes in life we are faced with challenges in which we have to make a decision about what is the best course of action. OK, not uh, that may be totally against what your heart wants. OK. Um, or you could walk the path of doing exactly what your heart wants and allow reason to fly out of the window. Okay. This is the choice. Um, and I think this choice came about either or will be coming about surrounding some news that has come in. Um, this could be surrounding a trip. If this is business, this could be a business trip. Uh, this could be you meeting someone quite suddenly and unexpectedly. This card can also represent love at first sight. Now, I think what is most, I don't know, I don't want to say perplexing, but is most interesting about this card is the fact that those eight wands are simply flying through the air. 
we don't see a target for them. They're just it's flying through the air. We can assume that, and there's this open expanse. So typically, it's kind of like um, something happening quite suddenly and quite quickly. Okay, it's not the energy of the tower where it's something that comes in and can kind of, you know, rearrange your world. It is something that comes in and there's a great passion with it. That's what the wands represent. So this could be love or it could be work. Um, over on the other side, I have the hanged man. Now, this card, the lovers, represents... Let me turn my light off because it, for me, I can't see the cards. Hold on. Maybe you can see them better. I don't know. Um, there we go. This card, the lovers, represents Gemini. And Gemini is ruled uh, by Mercury. So if you've ever heard the term, somebody say, oh, that person's so mercurial, that means that they change quite quickly, um, that they're never the same. You don't quite know which person or which personality you're going to get. Um, and here we have the hanged man, and this represents Neptune. Uh, and Neptune uh, is related to the moon. Now, we know that the moon can bring about, you know, we've heard lunacy, um, that's moon madness. Um, it represents fears. It represents illusions. It re Why? Because we don't see as clearly by the light of the full moon as we do by the sun. Um, but Neptune also obscures things. See, Neptune is all about that universal love, that unconditional love. And so it kind of speaks like there may have been a relationship that has come in out of the blue quite suddenly um, that has how do you, you, you're going to have to make a choice about it if you haven't already, because there's a lot of confusion surrounding this relationship. So in a sense, this is the choice that you make. You, you choose to sacrifice either yourself or the relationship. Okay. So this could be either you meet someone and you fall head over heels in love and you just throw caution to the wind and, you know, you're all in a fog of love and you just jump into it. OK, or it could be that you've met someone quite suddenly, but there's something not quite right or that you can't put your finger on. You recognize that there's there's some fog around it because that's what Neptune Neptune creates a fog. That's really if you've ever seen the planet Neptune, it's shrouded in fog. So and you decide, hey, this shit's too foggy for me. So you you sacrifice that person or that relationship. OK, uh, but. Nevertheless, I think the main important message of this is that's a sacrifice that you do on your own. The hangman, nobody put the hangman on that cross. He hung himself upside down because he's looking at things from a different perspective. Okay. Um, what's interesting is that Mercury moves very quickly. He's known as the messenger of the gods. So we start out here, and I do feel in a sense that this is directly related to the Mercury going retro, uh, direct. I'm sorry. But over on the other side, this is either someone moving ahead quite quickly or someone who has put a sudden halt. Okay. So it, it's, it's kind of strange, but this is the choice. This is the choice. And I can see on the one hand that from this angle, the hangs man over to the two of wands to the seven of cups, um, some of you may be on the fence, sort of like the hangman. <laughs> Some of you haven't made a choice one way or the other. Some of you will jump right in. Others of you have pulled back. And some of you don't know what to make of the entire situation. So that's why we're standing here with this two of wands. Do I or don't I? There are lots of choices here. What if I pick the wrong one? There are lots of decisions to be made. What if I make the wrong one? Um, so this is... Venus and Scorpio, and we're going through that transit right now. And I don't know if you know anything about Venus and Scorpio, but it is one of the toughest placements to have in your astrological chart. Um, Venus and Scorpio is that deep, obsessive kind of love. And when I say obsessive, I don't mean it in a way where somebody's stalking you, although it could be. Um, I don't see that in the spread. But what it means, a Venus and Scorpio person who has that uh, loves deeply and unconditionally. And for them, it's never light. They are either all in or they are all out, period. There is no black and white. They will bleed for you. They will die for you. But they expect that same thing back, okay? 
So, um, and I think there's some, some confusion surrounding this. If this resonates with anyone, the, the description that I just gave you of the Venus and Scorpio. Um, that Venus and Scorpio person will give you anything you ask for if you are loyal to them. Woe be gone to the person, though, that betrays them. Okay? Um, and so here is it, this card represents what really is it that I want? What really is, what are, I want all. I want everything. I want everything. Well, how do I attain that? Well, then if I get that, is that the wrong thing for me? Um, so this is really, to me, speaks to confusion. Um, and so the six has come in to bring about some balance, I think. And particularly if this is eclipse energies. Because um, it, it, it's been the craziest thing I've ever seen and personally have experienced. Um, and this card is about understanding that, uh, for one, uh, you there's more to giving than money. It's not all about finances, but it also is asking that you weigh up how it is that you give and you receive in a relationship. Now, the most important denominator in any relationship is yourself. And if you are in a relationship or you've been in a relationship and you've done all of the giving and the other person hasn't done, hasn't given as much, we know that in relationships, it's never 50-50. But if you've been really working hard and doing your more than your fair share and you're not getting a return on that, so this card is asking you to call into question why that is. Because as you can see, one person is receiving one thing and another person is not receiving anything. Okay, and vice versa. If you've been doing all of the taking from someone in a relationship and they've been doing all of the giving and they have, let's say, in effect, made the decision to walk away, here we see all of this confusion and I do think something has occurred, then you need to also look at that. Um, there are more ways to give. There is value in simply the act of sharing, whether that be lending someone your shoulder, lending someone your ear, lending someone a helping hand. Um, there are more ways uh, of giving than of money. So if this is someone who's been doing nothing but taking resources from you, financial resources, you need to take a look at that. Um, some of you, I think this Ten of Swords is quite perplexing to me in the spread itself. Um, and... Because it implies that someone stabbed you in the back, in a sense. You can see that guy's got all of those swords. And if this is the case, this is the way you're feeling. Remember, these are swords. In fact, this is the only sword that I have in the actual spread thus far. We don't know what's underneath the two of wands. So this is a perception. This card can sometimes be known as... Um, uh, feeling at rock bottom. Okay. I just can't, I can't do it anymore. But sometimes we have to change the perception to say, well, you know, if I went through this with somebody and this is what I got out of it, remember you put yourself there. So this is really not somebody who stabbed you in the back. This is you turning your back and allowing them to stab you. You put up no defenses. Okay. Darkest before the dawn. And maybe this is, sometimes this is news. And maybe this is something that comes to you, an event that comes to you that helps you to gain the clarity that you need. Because you see, I have the Ace of Swords as the overall energy. So I kind of feel like this may be a situation in which um, something will be coming to light. And I have this Ace of Wands here. Um, and the Ace of Wands, um, both of these Aces are gifts from the universe. But the universe just doesn't give you something um, like that. There's always, when you, again, it goes back to the give and take. When you give something, sometimes you cannot expect a return on it. But yet at the same time, when you give something, in a sense, um, be willing to accept something as well. So here the universe is trying to offer you something, but it's a test. And you're going to have to figure out uh, how to pass this particular test to take advantage. The aces represents opportunities. 
So this is an opportunity to go forward with something. This is also a new spiritual journey. This is getting a new fire in your belly. This is striking out on a new journey, um, starting that business, starting that new relationship, moving to a different part of the world or the country. So this is that, that desire and that will coming up, okay? And so there's an opportunity coming for you, but first you've got to figure out what this is. And what the ace tells me is that you're going to be able to figure out how to do it because the ace comes in to cut through all of the bullshit, Okay. It's like all of a sudden you're going to be able to see a clear path to where it is you want to go and what you want to do and who are those people you want to come along with you or not. I think this ace here, this eight of wands is the key, but here's this 10 of swords here. And it looks, if I'm just looking at the cards and I'm looking down this here, you know, there's a sacrifice being made here. There's a hang up. There's something holding it up. It surrounds give and take. And so far, I don't think anybody feels as though they've gotten everything that they wanted out of it. But why is that? That's the question. What is it that, what, what's missing that we don't see whatever this 10 of swords represents? So what I'm going to do See, and this is a go energy and this is a stop energy, okay? And this looks like, oh, and you know, I think if I'm looking at it diagonally from the lovers to the two of wands to the ten of swords, it's kind of like that, uh, it's a bittersweet victory. You have to walk away and leave something else behind so that you can focus your attention on something else. So, of course, you're going to feel like this, okay? But again, that's a perception. It's not... Oh my God, why can I never get, why can I never find the right person? Why can I never get, you know, that corner office I've been looking for? Why can't I get, you know, my mom and my dad to understand what the hell I'm going through? Um, why can I not find one friend that will be there when I need it? No, um, it depends on how you look at it, okay? Maybe you're giving too much and you're not expecting anything. You know, they tell us, you know, you should give without expecting something in return. And on one hand, that is the spirit of giving. But let's face it, if you're giving something, you do expect at least gratitude and thanks and appreciation. OK, it's not about a tangible uh, return on your giving, you know, a simple thank you. I really appreciate that. A hug, a phone call, a text message, an email. Um that's enough. So let's take a look, but we don't always get those things. So we're going to have to, if that's something that is uh, bothering you or has been an issue for you, you're going to need to learn to look at that differently. And it may not be necessarily uh, the person. It could, it could be you. Maybe you've been doing the giving so much that people just automatically assume that that's what you're going to do. So they don't think about thanking you and showing any gratitude and appreciation. But remember, if that's the case, if, you, if you've been doing this and you haven't been speaking up about it and you get stabbed in the back, that was through your own choice. You see, this card speaks to having the two options. In other words, you don't have to do things the same old way that you've been doing them. And that is the message of the cards. Okay. That's our focus. You have a, you have an opportunity being presented to you or have been presented to you to do things differently. But this implies that you have been making the same choice. Okay. See, this card is focused in the past. So this is, you've been making the same choice over and over and over again, expecting a different result. Well, now Something is coming in, giving you an opportunity to choose differently so that you can. And look at this. This is the last of the pip cards. That's the first of the pip card in the sword suits. That's a 10. That's the one. And all aces are related to the magician. And the magician is the person who, in his higher vibration, um, can create illusions. In other words, change your perception and you change your reality. OK, when he's operating from his lower vibration, this is doing shit to make people think other things. That's manipulation. That's sleight of hand. That's trickery. 
okay? You don't want to be in that energy. If you've been in that energy, that's probably why you got this. So, see, because there's some confusion around, even this 10 of, there's confusion around that. There's confusion here. Confusion there. I mean, no matter which way you look at it, there's confusion on the outside of this situation. Uh, the cross cards here, things moving at a good clip. Um, if this is a business or, or your finances have been out of whack, I think that they're going to be coming into balance, but it's going to require that you do the work. Um, you see, we have the scales there. And I think that some of this energy is indeed coming up around Libra. Uh, Libra is the only astrological sign in the Zodiac that's not represented by a human or an animal. You know, we have the bull, we have the virgin, we have the scorpion, we have the crab, we have the archer. Well, Libra is simply a symbol, <laughs> okay? And what are symbols sometimes? Symbols are messages. Uh, they can also be status messages. Um, they speak their own language. And it's being adept at knowing what that symbol represents for you that makes it something important, okay? So we're going to look at um, the four corner cards is really... That's just plain old confusion. And in a sense, it's kind of like across the center here, this individual has been able to, I don't know, maintain a balance of some sort. It's like... Um, even if they're not... Oh, it's difficult to explain. Maybe it'll come to me in a minute as I put the cards out. Okay, so first card I want to look at is I want to look at this choice, this lover's up at the top. It's not the two of cups, okay? Um, the lovers can turn into the two of cups, but this is not the two of cups. And the angel in the center is Raphael. This is the angel of love. He represents love, the archangel of love and healing. The Wheel of Fortune has come out on that. Now, that's not an answer because we know that the wheel goes up and goes down. So it is learning to accept the ups and downs of life without making it feel like it's the end of the world. Okay? The Knight of Pentacles, some kind of offer or something news. But this is leading out of the spread, which would make sense, last card down, that this is the new thing, okay? The King of Swords. Now, this is either a person, it could be an air sign person, it could simply represent the energy of Libra, but it can also um, represent, um, I'm going to read you the exact meaning of the court cards because they're totally different than the ones in the thing. It has to do with moving forward with something. And then the Ten of Pentacles. And what do I have <laughs> underneath this deck? I have the Ace of Swords with the Moon. Now, what was I just telling you about the moon? Um, <clears throat> the moon, it can represent uh, romance, seduction, uh, but it could also represent phobias, fears, lies, deceptions. Now, where's my little book? So on top of this confusion that we have here, what what choice? I got so many choices. I got so many things. I don't even know what to. What's the best one? What what is it? Um, what do I choose? Do I do I? Is this the right decision for me? You know, because there's so many possibilities. That's what I'm getting from that seven of cups, and the clarification of the Knight of Swords says and this is quite interesting. Energy and resources to advance, still looking for the right direction, hovering over practical 
constraints, determination, and perseverance. And that's what I was trying to pull across from these cards, that this particular individual, although I feel things um, is just kind of moving forward, they're focused on the task at hand, and they are moving forward. Um, I don't think they're looking back, and I don't necessarily think they're really looking that far ahead. They have an idea of where they want to go, and so they're simply putting one foot in front of the other, and they're moving, okay? You, you have, if this is um, still looking for the right direction, I think that is, oh, sorry, that was the knight, and I'm reading for the king. Hold on. This is a determination to break free from the past, a strong will, feeling equipped to deal with uncertainty, wisdom, and intellectual maturity. Okay, that's, and I apologize for that. So let me read that again. It is a determination to break from the past, a strong will, feeling equipped to deal with uncertainty, wisdom, and intellectual maturity. Now, and it's the same message. This person is simply trying to move ahead and has made a decision that um, they're not going to allow the past, see, the cycle of reincarnation here, uh, come in and kind of harsh their mellow, okay? Really doesn't know how things are going to turn out, but yet moving through in the best manner that the person can. Using their wisdom, this represents a new spiritual journey and their intellect. So this is someone who is really about to, um, who's able to grasp these two opportunities coming in. Now, the moon card out here, I'm not exactly sure if this is speaking to a change that's coming about at the full moon. Remember, I was just saying this is going to play out for <laughs> until the full moon. Um, let's look at this ten of swords, this being at rock bottom, closure, giving up, uh, the darkest before the dawn. I have... Let me make sure I got it right. The Knight of Pentacles on top of that to clarify it. And the Knight of Pentacles comes in to tell us it is advancement in a practical direction, a productive expression of creativity, and a clear goal in sight. See that? Look. So this is somebody saying, you know what? I'm not going to let whatever this shit is stop me from going after what it is that I want to do. Um no matter what that is. It doesn't have to be anything big, you know, um, but they obviously, there's something that they want to do and they're focused on doing that. And they're not allowing any other outside influences to come in and detract them from the direction in which they've chosen to go. Um, I would think that there, this person has no real clarity around this, whatever the situation is. They have no real idea of what's coming up or what's next or but sometimes that's the best way to work you know that's the best way to move forward just to do it and be open to whatever happens and being able to kind of think on your feet now here we have the hanged man who's telling us to look at things from a different perspective we're saying we're going to suspend this ten of coins here okay we're going to um Look at this Ten of Coins quite differently. We're going to put that Ten of Coins up on the shelf. Okay. Um, you know, I got this card in another reading the other day. I don't know which one it was. And, and maybe it was somebody I was reading for personally. I feel that this is, it's both an energy, but it's also a person, um, a Neptunian person. Um, and the Neptunian person is someone who comes in and just sweeps you off your feet. Um, and I feel that there's some issue perhaps going on with this person's health right now. Maybe their lower back, their hip, their knee, their leg, their foot. Um, and the reason why I say lower back is remember they got that teeter hang up thing that you can stretch out your lower back. Um, this could be someone who may have vertigo. This could be someone who might be suffering from migraines, but I think it's all stress related. 
this Ten of Coins here. Um, let's read the Ten of Coins. The Ten of Coins speaks to abundance, intensive activity in practical affairs, material success and achievements. Now listen, some may be getting more than others. Now that is quite interesting, right underneath that card. So if this is someone who's having some physical ailments, these ailments are caused because they're under a lot of stress. They're doing a lot of things. Uh, they perhaps are providing more to other people and they don't have enough time for themselves. Remember, this person is hung up there by themselves, though. OK. So I, I kind of feel that this is some Neptunian kind of person. Um, the wheel on top of a choice. And the wheel is never an answer. In this deck, the wheel says um, changes in circumstances and position arise after a fall. Gambling, putting faith in capricious luck, life cycles, closure of circles, adapting to the routine of everyday life. Also a hint to previous incarnations. So it's kind of saying it, it falls on the leading card that this is perhaps a repetitive cycle that's been repeated. Remember I said you've been doing things the same old way, but now you have an option, a choice where you don't have to. Okay. But it also speaks to some type of karmic lesson here. And um, I think right now, <clears throat> maybe uh, there's so much confusion that you're unable to someone is unable to recognize that it's a karmic cycle um, and that they're being given an opportunity to either get off the wheel or to fix themselves in the center. If you fix yourself in the center, then you can adapt to whatever the circumstances are. But at the same time, you have an option to get off the wheel for a little while. Don't be the gerbil on the wheel. Okay. Now, we still have a card underneath here, but I, I want you to notice something. I was just peeking. It's peeking out from underneath here. That's the end of your karmic cycle. And this requires a leap of faith. Okay. Now, I'm going to pull one card on this because there's a warning also with the, I mean, you can't, it's polarity, the duality. You can't have one, you can't have good without the bad, uh, light without the dark, sun without the moon. Um, it's there for balance. That's the way the natural world works. I'm going to pull this moon card off and I'm going to shuffle and ask for one card to give us some clarification on the Fool. Then I'm going to pull a few cards on, I want to pull three cards on the Wheel of Fortune. Sabila's, I really don't think I need to. I think this is quite clear in what it's saying. But it speaks to also, again, the opportunity. It's an opportunity here. This will represents an opportunity. And if some of you are faced with choices and opportunities, you know, look at that opportunity from a different angle. Look at it from a different perspective. Figure out what this opportunity, what it is. How can you best take advantage of it and use it to your advantage? How can you do it in a fair and balanced manner? what is going to be the payoff of you taking this particular opportunity uh, by the hand and welcoming it. Um, two lover's cards. <laughs> now, what the hell? <laughs> this lover's is about choice. Here's that opportunity. This lovers is about this. And that's why you have different decks because each one speaks differently. The lovers in the <laughs> Marseille, these cards are so funny in the Marseille, says love, amorous relationship, emotional entanglement, a need to make a choice or to disengage oneself from past influences. Remember I said this is what this is what I think this is all about. 
Okay, somebody just said, I don't know what the fuck, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to just, I, I got to do something. Okay, um, it says, uh, need to make a choice or to engage oneself from past influences. Inclinations of the heart correspond to the will of heaven. Let me read that again. Inclinations of the heart correspond to the will of heaven. Small steps actually taken are the visible signs of inner desire, a leap of faith. The message of this card is follow the path of the heart. But that is the crux of the problem. Is it not? That is the crux. That's the crux of the problem. What is the right path? of the heart. Now, let me uh, put that moon card back over there and I'm going to pull, how funny is that? These, uh, this says you're, you're going to be able to make the right decision. You know, you're, I, you know, and I think you're going to have to trust. And I think really that's what it's all about. Um, how funny. These cards are so funny. Uh-oh. Card flew out. Let's take a look at the wheel. What do I do? I'm damned if I do. I'm damned if I don't. What do I do? Oh, my God. What do I do? And so maybe for some of you, you've just been, like I said, focused on the task at hand. That's how we're going to read that card. Someone being focused on the task at hand. Not necessarily that they're sitting still and not doing anything. Um, they're just focused on the task at hand. And maybe... The man of letters. I don't know where my little white book is. That guy's a scientist. If he's not a scientist, he's someone who's a very, very good problem solver, good critical thinking skills. Um, he likes problems. He likes to solve them. Um, I'm going to put him back. And if he comes up again on the Wheel of Fortune, then he was meant to be part of the message. I, I think that is important, but I want to get the whole cohesive message. The crux of the problem is this. And then we're going to see what card lies underneath. Let me put another good rifle on this. I don't know if that moon is a timing or what. Okay, look at here. This is a 10. And uh, and we have two 10s and two aces. That's like getting four aces. And all of it is related to the magician. Um, we add the one and the zero together. It gives us a one. So all because it's a major arcana. Uh, the fool would come first. Here, look at it. It's right there. Look at this. It would be the fool, then the wheel of fortune. Because, you know, he can step off on faith and everything will be fine. Or he can be foolish. Up or down. And then we have the aces that surround these cards. Oh, sorry. That's the fool. This is the beginning. We're looking for the magician. Well, I don't know where the hell he is, but he would be at the top. <laughs> okay. And this is being able to um, take advantage of the situation or at least be willing to accept whatever the situation is. But this says you don't, you, you, um, it's a new opportunity. I don't know why I thought that was a magician. I told you Mercury's still playing tricks on me. But he's kind of represented over here in this lover's card. Magician represents Mercury as well. B. 
being tied, being lonely, sad, and isolated, and tied to your past. Having doubts, fear, suspicion, and jealousy. But over here, the wheel offers you an opportunity to have happiness of the heart. So, what do you do? Why ain't that something? It really is the time to let go of the past. Um, because the past is a done deal. Well, see, you have that choice. You can stay trapped on the wheel and see that mirrors the wheel. It mirrors the wheel. And this person is fixed in the center. This is Saturn. Saturn brings um, restrictions and limitations. It may be saying to you, well, not yet. It's not a no. It's a not yet. But if you embody the energy of the fool and you just say, fuck it, I'm going to do it. You step out. You come off the wheel. You step out of that protective wreath you didn't put around yourself. <laughs> You walk on a new journey. Um, wow. Well, that's what I have for you. I hope that message uh, helps you through the weekend. Um, quite interesting that was. And until next time, namaste. I was just about to close those cards down and uh, this happens every once in a while and I got another message <clears throat> that I felt that I should pass along because it may be important to someone out there and it is dealing with this hanged man. As I said before, the Wheel of Fortune is the key, but what's important about the hanged man, all of the stuff I said still holds true. And remember I said this is a Neptunian kind of person. Well, the hangman represents, it's a water. Okay, and it represents Pisces. Um, so this is someone who, if not a water sign, will have water qualities. Um, but the message that came through was, even though this Wheel of Fortune is the key here, having a choice or whether or not you want to continue to do the same things the same way or whether you want to do it a new way. This really speaks to boundaries. Neptune erodes boundaries. He's foggy and he erodes boundaries. He dissolves them. Um, and I feel that this has to do with um, I, in one sense, I want to say it might be surrounding someone's home life um, because that kind of comes through too, but it is like what I'm getting is that this is someone or a situation in which the boundaries have been completely dissolved. There is no stability. And so in order to compensate for that in the material sense, because that's what the, in the actual physical world in that person's environment, um, instead of them getting off the wheel, they just hang themselves upside down. Um, and so it is the message of boundaries. Uh, I don't know if that means anything to anybody out there. Um, as if the cards are saying there's really no boundaries surrounding someone or their environment that things have gotten so out of control that all they can do to just stabilize themselves 
is to suspend themselves. Um, okay, that's it. I don't, I don't know why that message came through. I hate it when they come through like that. I've, I figured I've done with it, and then I get ready to close the cards down, and the message comes back. So now that's the end of it, and I hope that helps. <laughs> okay, I mean, but what that says because they mirror each other is that if this is the situation that they're the boundaries you've had to hang yourself up just to whatever um that's because you've been making the same choices you've been making the same choices and um and that's what akashic records is all about is you get the information to figure out what the hell's going on and then you once you have that information then you have the choice now you know exactly why you've been doing what it is the way you've been doing it and why you've been doing it over and over and over again but now you have the information if you understand that then you can really understand that you know what i don't want to keep doing that i know where that's coming from so um that's that it's because there's no boundaries that have been eroded i think this person whomever this represents has in a sense kind of brought their boundaries back uh in a way they're not real solid but it's you know it, there's something there they've gotten their boundaries back whereas this individual or situation there's still some boundary issues here um that's it namaste